how would you design Amazon Prime Video? Hey everyone, I'm Selena here to do another Exponent Mock Interview. Um, today we have Dallin. Uh, Dallin, do you mind introducing yourself a bit? Sure. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Dallin. Um, I'm currently a software engineer at Uber. Before that, I was spending my master's degree at University of Chicago, um, and I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Um, and th you know, thanks for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, cool. So let's just dive right into it. Um, the question I have for you today is, um, how would you design Amazon Prime Video? Sure, uh, that's an interesting one. Um, so just to clarify, I actually haven't used Amazon Prime before, or Amazon Prime Video rather. Um, I'm imagining it's something that's similar to Netflix. So essentially it's like a video streaming service for curated content, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Cool, okay. So I guess within that, there's a bunch of different components um, in like the user experience. Uh, like they'll need to log in, um, they'll need to make sure that like somebody who's logged in, their account info is up to date, they've paid on time. Um, and then I guess the more core flow would be uh, what happens with the videos. So like people will come and you'll have like producers that upload videos, uh, you can have users uh, streaming videos. Um, and then like you can also search through the film library um, and maybe get recommendations. Um, so I guess for this, we'll want to focus on like the video flow and not so much the auxiliary services. Um, is that a reasonable scope? Yeah, let's keep it to like the core uploading and streaming for now. Cool, that sounds good. Um, so I guess uh, we can go ahead and talk about uh, the requirements. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to go through like what I think reasonable assumptions are. Um, and so if anything kind of jumps out as being unreasonable, um, just feel free to stop me um, and we can clarify it then. Um, so I guess like thinking about it, the first thing uh, that comes to mind is we really only have two clients. There's uh, kind of going to be a production company um, and we can call them say uploaders. They're going to upload films um, and then a viewer and the viewer wants to stream the films. So from the production company side, um, once a video gets uploaded, uh, we as a service, we can't lose it. Um, so that's kind of the first, I'm going to write this over here. Our first requirement is we want reliable, reliable video storage. Um, and then also this isn't YouTube. So we won't let just anyone um, come and upload videos. Rather, uh, we'll need some sort of access control such that only authorized clients can upload. Um, and so that's another one is uh, access control for uploads. Um, and I think for the upload flow, it would be reasonable to support only a web interface uh, because I think it's unlikely that somebody is going to want to or even be able to upload hour long video content from their mobile device. So um, as for like what kind of uh, video size will support, I think maybe as an upper limit, like four hour ish would be reasonable. So um, I'll just go ahead and say that like our upper limit is four hour max video. Um, and we don't really need to enforce the minimum at this point. Um, and so I guess this four hours, um, I think it's around two gigabytes per hour of uh, HD video. Um, that's the size. So conservatively, we'll estimate maybe 10 gigabytes per video upload. Um, and then from the viewer side, uh, once somebody selects the video, we want to make sure that we can stream it smoothly. So there should be like minimal buffering, minimal lag. Um, and I think, so that'll be another requirement is minimal buffering. And that actually like would depend on um, the viewer's network bandwidth. Um, and so if the film is buffering, uh, we may want to degrade the quality. So like we would show um, instead of 1080p, a 720p film. Um, to make sure that like it's a smooth streaming process. So I'll say we'll prioritize minimal buffering over video quality. Um, and so what that means uh, is we need to store in addition to the raw resource, um, we'll need to store like different quality versions of the film. So for example, for like each movie, we may want to store like a high quality version, a medium quality version, a low quality version, and then like the original one would probably be the HD version. Yeah, so for each video, like we'll store on um, like, I guess, four different versions, we can say from low to high to HD. Um, and so for like an HD video that comes in 10 gigabytes, um, we'll end up storing um, for those four versions and like each subsequent version will decrease quality. So that decreases the size. So we can allocate maybe 30 gigabytes for each video that's uploaded so that we can store like different quality versions. Um, and 
As for the viewer flow, the viewers um, will let them stream content onto their laptops, onto their uh, mobile phones, onto even like smart TVs. Um, and so that means that we want them to have like a good searching experience on each of those devices. Um, so as we think about searching, um, I'm kind of imagining like we'll have a video library uh, with like a carousel that people can scroll through. And for each of those, they'll see a thumbnail. Um, and so based on what device they're using, um, they'll see maybe a different, different thumbnail. Uh, it could be different quality or different size. So I think at this point, we can add one more requirement for upload. And so uploaders need to, they need to send a thumbnail in addition to a video. So uploaders need to share a thumbnail in addition to the video and then a thumbnail um, if we want to store different quality versions of it, similar to we did for videos. Um, I think we can we can allocate maybe 15 megabytes of storage um, for a thumbnail um, and like the different versions that will hold. And perhaps in the future, like it could be worth A B testing like which thumbnail draws the biggest crowd um, and like try to improve engagement that way. But uh, kind of for this uh, like initial version, let's just restrict uh, uploaders to a video and then only one thumbnail with that video. Um, we also talked about um, yeah yeah. So we also talked about um, like uh, as part of like finding a video, there could be recommendations and kind of like a simple heuristic with that for that would be kind of scoring how long somebody is watching a video as like a proxy to indicate how much they like it. So if they watch 100% of the video, then we give them 100% score. Um, and we can kind of use that um, like in combination with when we're curating videos. So like as somebody goes to upload a video, you know, we as like people serving the video want to make sure there's no like copyright infringements or inappropriate content. Um, and so there could be some like ML process that runs as part of the upload for upload flow. Um, and within that, we could also tag videos, uh, you know, based on like what kind of video they are and use that to align with um, if a viewer like is watching all of a video that is tagged a certain way, we can use that to align uh, the tags uh, from this like ML process. Um, and so this ML process would be part of the upload flow, but we want to make sure that it's not blocking um, like an uploader because it's probably going to take a long time to run through a four hour movie and we don't want to make somebody upload and stare at their screen for four hours, four plus hours maybe just uh, to watch that happen. So this ML process um, would happen asynchronously. And so we'll say ML tagging. Um, and so the next uh, assumption that I think we should make is that we're going to be getting a lot of traffic, um, like similar to Netflix. Uh, there's probably going to be people watching it from all over the world. Um, and because uh, there's going to be more people watching than uploading, there's going to be a high read to write ratio. So um, I think with that, we should make sure that our read path is highly, avail highly available. Um, and also, we should, uh, go we should aim for a highly available write path as well, um, because if we have like, exclusive content producers, um, we don't want them to leave our platform just because they're unable to upload videos. So here are really highly available reads and writes. Another thing that, um, that would be important is we want to be able to onboard more users without worrying that our systems are going to be overloaded. So uh, we want to make sure that like we're able to scale horizontally without any issues. Um, one thing that I think is less important in this case would be strong consistency. So I think actually that's not a requirement here because um, so if somebody uploads a video, uh, we don't need that video to be available to be streamed globally instantly the minute that they finish the upload. Um, like we'll need time uh, with this ML process that we talked about to like run our content approval checks. Um, we have, may also want to like premiere videos in some regions, but not others. And so I think um, going with an eventually consistent system will give us uh, some flexibility in terms of like how long it takes for our data to reach a consistent state. So here we're right, eventually consistent. Um, and then, like as we productionize our system, there's uh, some other things that we may want to think about. Like, um, uh, if we're operating in Europe, uh, we have to meet the GDPR requirements. Um, but I think, like for this exercise, that would be out of scope. Um, other things could be like uh, we'll run into decisions where we need to buy a solution versus like consider building it, building it ourselves. Um, and so, in this, I'll lean towards buying um, because uh, it's you know adds a bit complexity to like rely on another team, make sure that they want to like align with our timelines and are able to 
uh, meet our expectations. Um, so yeah, I think like in terms of uh, requirements, that's all I can think of uh, to get started. Uh, how does that sound? Yep, that sounds good. And um, you know, some of the trade-offs you made around like buffering versus quality, and then eventually consistent. Uh, that all makes sense. Um, let's start diagramming. Cool, cool. Um, so over here, I'll uh, just start to draw some boxes a little bit to the right of this. So at the highest level, um, we're going to have a streaming service. So there's going to need to be like a viewer flow. So I'll call this a viewer. And then we'll also need an uploaded flow. Um, and I guess we'll tackle the upload first because we have to get the data in there somehow before we can. So within our upload flow, um, well, I guess like thinking about the infrastructure a bit, um, we talked about like our scalability requirements. And so one way to kind of abstract those away would to be put putting our services into their own like auto scaling groups that sit behind their own load balancers. Um, and that way we really don't need to concern ourselves with uh, the scalability requirements that we talked about. Um, and so for these services, um, I'll just start to build out the upload flow a bit more. So the first thing that I'll put in front of it will be an API gateway. Um, and actually that can probably go in front of both services. So uh, this would be really useful just to simplify the contract that, that the client is dealing with. Um, and we can also have it take care of uh, like auxiliary services. So for example, um, maybe our API gateway can proxy onto a user service. And so the user service will handle um, authentication for us. Um, you know, it could use like OAuth callbacks, for example. That way we don't need to build that ourselves. Um, and then similarly, it would handle like authorization. So like can an uploader actually upload or uh, can a viewer like have they kept their account up to date? Um, and then this gateway, it'll pass the auth context into the downstream request. So I'll just look at the system variables here. So this will first proxy to the user service and then we can also get this to go to upload and the viewer box as well. Um, so in terms of like the upload flow, once we get an upload, uh, I think we're going to want to store the video in block storage. Um, it's going to be like a big, it'll be easy to represent like a huge film as binary. Um, and that's something that we can just put into an S3 bucket. And then we can sort of like let S3 handle uh, our requirement up here for reliable video storage. So um, once uh, the put operation into S3 completes, then we can go ahead and show a success message to our client. Um, and that way, like the uploader doesn't need to keep sitting around watching the screen. Um, although it might take some time, like there's a big file for the operation um, into S3 to complete. Um, and so once that is done, we can go ahead and I think we'll want to trigger the ML processing pipeline at this time. Um, and so we can do that just by publishing an event to Kafka. Um, I think for simplicity, we'll use like a managed Kafka solution that'll take care of uh, reliability and scalability for us. Um, and this event that we publish, uh, it will point to where the video lives in S3. Um, so like the S3 bucket's uh, URI for that video. And then the ML process, uh, it will consume uh, this, uh, this event from the queue and it's going to go through processing and write its results to a database. Um, and so for simplicity, we can use something like DynamoDB um, and its key will be a unique identifier for the video. Um, and so we can, here I'll just draw a little film DB for us. So um, over here, we've got some storage. Um, so let's call this the raw resource store and that will be S3. And then that will feed into the ML processing service. And then our ML processing service, when that's done, it'll write into our film DB. So I'll add some errors that connect these. Um, and for right now, I'm going to skip over uh, like writing uh, Kafka, but you can assume that that's underneath there, um, handling the event queuing. Cool. So at this point, um, 
it would be probably a good idea to actually talk to some ML engineers um, and figure out like exactly what data the ML processing pipeline um, would need so that it's like able to uh, be effective. Um, but that's kind of something that, um, you know, somebody more specialized could handle. Um, and so let's just go ahead and assume that the pipeline has the data that, it's need, that it needs and talk about the point that it's completed its processing. So when it does that, um, the first thing that I think it's going to need to do is write a Boolean to the database, indicating if the uploaded content is approved or not. Um, and then we'll also want to write some tags to the database, um, such as like what kind of content, and that way like our recommendation service can uh, be fed from that. Um, and then over time, like uh, as the ML pipeline sees more data, it's bound to improve. So we want to be able to reprocess content um, to perhaps get more accurate and more comprehensive tags. And the way that we could do that in the future is just add the resource back into the Kafka queue. And then as this ML pipeline pulls from it, it would just be able to reprocess uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so just move these over a bit smaller. So I guess the next thing in the sequence is when a film is approved by the ML pipeline, uh, we want to publish another event to Kafka. Um, and that'll indicate that the next uh, like step in the process can take place. Um, and so the next step, I think, would be to take care of the video quality concerns. Um, the same for the images. So as we talked about before, we're going to have to store uh, videos of different quality so that we can um, prioritize a smooth streaming experience over serving only HD videos. And so that pipeline will kick off, and then I imagine it will just write, um, you know, the lower quality films also to S3, and it can store those S3 URIs in uh, the record in the film database. Um, same deal with uh, the thumbnails, we'll just uh, make a few different um, conversions of those into like different quality or different sizes. Um, and we'll store those in S3 as well. And we'll point to them uh, by writing um, writing the URI to like the record in the film database. Um, and I think it's important that we actually do this only after film gets approved, because like these videos um, require a lot of storage. Um, even the images too is, um, it's a bit, uh, it's not insignificant. And so we don't want to be like, storing all this additional data for films that we're not going to show. Um, and so I think now we've got our data processed. We've uh, got resources living in S3, and we're able to point to all of those from our film database. So the last step would actually be making it so that somebody could stream the films. Um, and it would be super difficult to just uh, like have our backend services transfer uh, like you know 10 gigabyte film from S3 uh, onto a client. Um, and so here we can rely on like a more specialized solution like a CDN. Um, and one of the things that would be great about using CDN would um, be that it, have, it would have like many points of presence. So like as we have uh, viewers from all over the world, no matter where they are, uh, there would be a box close to them. And so they can stream, um, you know, a huge asset with minimal, minimal latency. Um, perhaps in the future, like uh, an uploading client can configure a sequence of regions uh, that content would premiere in. But um, I think for now, just we'll say when a video is uploaded, we'll go ahead and we'll seed it to, um, to a CDN without restrictions. Um, and similarly, like, because this is going to be a pretty intense operation to send a lot of gigabytes over the wire, um, and there's no real rush. Um, so we could kind of do this in batch, just uh, periodically, maybe once a day, we'll go ahead and seed that base uh, approved videos into a CDN. Um, and then when seeding is complete, we'll have the URL uh, within the CDN and we'll just be able to write that into the film database. Um, so here I'll just draw another service and that'll be our CDN here. Cool. Um, I guess like one other thing that we could talk about is um, like if we're a video streaming service, um, like streaming would kind of be our bread and butter. Um, and we may not want to rely on like another another service to do this for us. We may have like uh, special distributions or locations that we want to support or other kind of optimizations. Um, and one way that we could kind of handle that in the future would just be put our boxes at the desired internet exchange points throughout the world and operate our streaming service with a bit more granularity. Um, but yeah, that would be something a bit more down the road. Um, and so I think right now we've got like the upload flow um, covered at a pretty high level. Um, as I look at this, one thing that I forgot to mention, though, is the browsing. So 
I guess the idea of browsing is we'll want to be able to search, uh, we'll be able, to, we want to be able to fetch to uh, feed into like a front end carousel. Um, and then optionally, uh, we'll be able to offer some recommendations. And so I guess like, as I think of searching, it would be pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we could hydrate a database that's optimized for text search, um, something like in a, a managed elastic search cluster. Um, so we'll hydrate that with uh, the list of films in the library and that our search API within the browse service will uh, be able to fetch from that. So here, I'll just go ahead and draw our browse service um, right here. And then this could be um, our last search. So searching through the browse service would just point to Elasticsearch. Um, and the way that would work would be um, Elasticsearch would tell us like, the titles that match somebody's query. So from there, we can query the film database and fetch um, like what the appropriate uh, thumbnail would be or what the appropriate video quality would be. And so we would be able to determine that information perhaps from some like metadata that comes along in the request from the client. Um, and then we'll send all of those things back to the client so that they can load the thumbnail and then on a click uh, be able to load uh, the video from the CDN as well. Um, the scrolling flow would be kind of similar. So like assuming we don't do any personalization, um, we'll just make paginated get requests uh, to an API in the browse service. Um, and similarly, it'll query the film database. It'll return titles, thumbnails, or pointers to the thumbnail asset, pointers to the video asset, and send those back to the client. Um, and like in the future, we could uh, include additional data, um, you know, try, trying to improve like the user experience. But um, I think at this point, we don't really need to go into that. Um, and I guess like the last part of browse could be recommendations. Um, and that's a super interesting topic with really a lot to dive into. Um, but for now, kind of at the highest level, the way that would work is um, we would just need to know the tags of what films a user is viewing and then like what percentage of the film um, they've watched. And that way we can kind of align like a user uh, likes films a lot with this tag because they tend to watch them towards the end. And so then the recommendation service would be able to query for which films are tagged that kind of have the highest overlap with uh, like the most popular tags for a particular viewer. And then um, in the same way as the other browse methods, um, we would just be able to return that information to the client. Um, and this could get you know, a lot more complicated um, as we try to improve it. But I think at a bird's eye view, this would really round out the browse service over here. Um, cool. And so I guess with okay. that, we can, cool. Um, I guess next we can start to talk about uh, streaming. Um, and so at this point in the user flow, uh, they will have already seen maybe a carousel or search results or recommendations. And so they go ahead and they click on a thumbnail. Um, and when they click on the thumbnail that they like, all that the front end really has to do is open a UI for watching a video and then fetch the content from the URL that, um, that's being pointed to by the video um, URL that we sent back. So here, it'll just be fetching the asset from the CDN. And the CDN is optimized for serving um, these sorts of huge assets. So we'll let that kind of do its thing. Um, and that'll be in streaming the video. Um, optionally, another thing that we could add is just some JavaScript in the background that'll be making requests to our backend, um, you know, tracking how engaged the viewer is with the film, um, you know, things for logging and analytics, um, other things that we could do uh, to improve the recommendation engine. Um, and so with that, we've got the ability to upload uh, films um, to the service, search for films if you're a viewer, and then um, stream and watch a watch a film, hopefully with a minimal buffering. So that covers, I think, most of the product recs. Um, and we're relying a lot on managed services that'll handle um, kind of some of the non-product recs for us, like availability um, and uh, replication. So at this point, I'm wondering if there's anything um, like additional that you'd like me to dive into. Um, I can still talk about, you know, we haven't talked much about like API schema or data modeling. Um, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, this was, yeah, you're right. This is a very complex system. Um, I think we did a good job on the system design stuff. Um, so let's, you know, let's pause for now. You're right. We could definitely get in the weeds on the APIs and the data model. Um, but uh, let's get into some, to some uh, let's get into some feedback. I was taking notes, but was curious. Um, do you have any self feedback to offer on the call? Um, yeah, so one thing is like, I've really done this mostly at a high level, but um, 
in like a system design interview, I feel like I would also want to demonstrate my knowledge of like uh, distributed system concepts. And so like here I've mostly drawn boxes and talked about um, like services that somebody else will manage. But um, instead of relying so heavily on like, um, you know, managed database services or things like that, I could talk about replication, um, sharding, partitioning, um, and things like that to sort of like get into a bit more depth or show um, like my specialization. Gotcha. Um, cool. Well, thanks for the self feedback. It's always helpful to hear where your, um, you know, where your head's at. Um, so what I wrote down was um, what I thought you did really well was, um, in, in the top of the question, we were really clear on the trade offs you were making and why. So, for example, you know, why we would care more about, um, you know, minimal buffering over the video quality. Um, why, you know, strong consistency is not actually, you know, a requirement for this sort of system. Um, I thought that was all very reasoned and had, um, you know, some product insight tied into it. Um, which was great. Um, let's see. I think throughout the um, throughout the call, you made sure to call out some you know small optimizations we could do along the way. Um, for example, like let's not block the upload on the ML processing. Like that would be a bad user experience. Um, so again, like I thought that showed some good um, insight that you tied into the system design. Um, I think sort of to your point around like what to spend more time on in the future. Um, one thing I noticed was that it was a pretty like linear conversation. Um, so I might have checked in with the interviewer to see if they cared more about the types of uh, details you provided, which were all great and made total sense, or if they wanted to talk more about distributed systems because you know depending on what you know they're looking for and the hat they're assigned, um, you know they might be looking for something um, else or the same, but you don't know until you ask. But overall, like I thought this was really strong. Um, you did a great job. Um, so yeah, thank you for being on the show and taking uh, you know taking the time to chat. Um, anything to add before we wrap up? Um, no, that's it. Yeah, thanks for the time. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds good. Um, well, thanks again for joining and for those watching. Good luck on your upcoming interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.